You're watching Hello Nigeria. You are watching Hello Nigeria. Don't touch the dial. Hello Nigeria. Sit back and relax. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. It's time for us to look at how to care for the eyes. Now, this week is World Glaucoma Week, and we're looking at how to prevent the incidences of this, what can cause it, who is predisposed to this. And joining us to have this conversation is Dr. Abiola Oyeleye, consultant ophthalmologist and medical director at the Eye Doctors Clinic, and is also the chairman of the Ophthalmological Society of Nigeria, Lagos chapter, as well as the vice president of the Ophthalmological Society of Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Welcome, Thank you very sir. Much. Thank you. It's, I feel like, you know, we had you last year and it was such a, a beautiful experience and we're hoping that this year there'll be more awareness. Let's look at the duration of the past year. Between last year and this year, do you think that people have been better informed about glaucoma or how to care for the eyes? Well, we think so. People in the urban areas, uh, there's still a bit of a problem getting into getting to the rural areas. For people in the urban areas, we feel that at least more people are coming for screening. So by that behavior, we believe that the awareness is becoming more, more and more. Okay. Mm. Okay, and then there's always, of course, we know, of course, about glaucoma, but then there's always this issue of um, we as Nigerians paying attention to yeah. health, going for the regular checkups, That's right. you know, routine checks and everything. Now, whenever I meet um, an ophthalmologist and I ask them, okay, how is it going when it comes to, you know, the issue of the eyes? So yeah. Sometimes people would show up and, you know, they give them prescriptions and then sometimes they don't follow up. Sometimes they are given appointments and then they don't follow up. So before we talk about glaucoma, when it comes to your own, you know, um, your own statistics, right. if I would say, mm -hmm. Nigerians, how do we respond to treatment for our eyes? Um, not as well as we should, okay? Um, you hit the nail on the head. Awareness is one factor. Then to actually um, have access of care and to have access of good quality care because it's not universal, it's not everywhere. And essentially, when you want to tackle a problem like glaucoma, which is the second most common cause of blindness worldwide, you need, it, you need the facilities, the personnel to be available so people can access them all around. Mm. Mm. All right, seeing as it's World Glaucoma Week, what would you, what would you say it is? How would you define it? Uh, is that's a week or the or glaucoma itself? Yeah, glaucoma itself. Uh, glaucoma is a disease of the eye. Okay, um, I'm trying to make this definition as simple as possible. Please, for we delay men. Yeah, it's, it's a disease of the eye whereby the pressure in the eye damages the structures of the eye. That's the nerve at the back of the eye. So if the pressure inside the eye is too high, it damages the nerve of the eye. And the nerve of the eye is what helps us see. Anything we see is taken to the brain through the nerve. So the nerve is the messenger. So once the messenger is damaged, no information or poor quality information gets through to the brain. So essentially, simply put, in glaucoma, the pressure in the eye damages the nerve of the back of the eye. And are there any lifestyle choices that makes mm. one predisposed to glaucoma? Um, first of all, as Africans, that makes us more predisposed than Caucasians or the Indians. Why? Well, it's, it, it's, um, it's very, uh, very widely known that in Africans, glaucoma starts at an earlier age than in Caucasians. It's a more aggressive disease in Africans. And then in Africans, we don't actually do routine tests, sometimes based on the fact that the countries don't actually offer things, that, and people don't have what we're saying is access to care as well. So with all, uh, and we don't respond to treatment as well as the Caucasians. For example, we think part of the reason is the melanin we have. For those who are having surgery, it's um, the, the failure rate of surgery is much higher in the Africans because we heal quickly. And when you're doing surgery, you want to open a channel up, but our natural healing response will close that channel. 
So there's so many factors in the African race that makes us predisposed to having glaucoma. Another one is age. As we get older, we are more likely to have glaucoma. So age is another factor. It's recommended that anybody with glaucoma in the family should have a routine eye test at the age of 30. But in Caucasians, they say start having eye tests at the age of 40 or 50. But in Africans, we say 30. Then family history. If your parents have glaucoma or any of your siblings, it makes you four times more likely than the next person who doesn't have glaucoma in the family to now develop glaucoma. Mm. If you are short-sighted or extremely short or extremely long-sighted, that's also a risk factor for glaucoma. So there are many factors, though, there are many risk factors towards glaucoma. Oh, okay. So what, what are the things, what are the preventive measures that can be um, put in place or applied to actually avoid glaucoma? Right. Preventive measures, we don't know. Because um, the dynamics that go on in the eye is what actually causes the glaucoma. The important thing, what we are trying to do now is to say, first of all, let us detect glaucoma early. And the only way you can detect glaucoma early is early, is, is having a screen or going for an eye check. If you want to look at it critically for, maybe for academic purposes now, we are getting some genes in the body, which we know that these genes are linked with glaucoma. And then if you test for those genes, you know that this person is probably due to, or is probably liable to have glaucoma rather than somebody else. But we find out that this gene testing is a new thing, and we found out it's more applicable to younger people with glaucoma yeah. than the older people with glaucoma, which is the main group. So genetic, genetic testing is coming in to prevent, but we are still a little bit away from that. But it is coming in slowly. Okay, so there's also the talk about um, um, people being advised, yes, as we've talked about, yeah. people being advised to go for checks. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes you speak to, you know, average Nigerians and they tell you, oh, with the cost of medicine, the cost of care, cost of tests, these are their fears. So wh what about, what happens to, you know, you go to the general hospital yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. and, okay, I will give an example. When yeah. I was going to apply for the law school, yeah. I had to be referred to Isola General Hospital for my eye test. Meanwhile, I started my checkup from Randall in Surulere. Right. Now, it, all over between Surulere, you know, um, Isola local government, there was only one general hospital that had a working eye clinic where an eye test could okay, be done. Okay, okay, so okay. how accessibility okay. costs... Right. You, you, you have a point there. At the moment, I know there are eight Lagos State hospitals that have eye clinics, actually nine that have eye clinics, Lagos wow. State hospitals now, okay? Um, a lot of us say um, medical care or eye care is expensive. And yes, it is, for some people, it is expensive. But even people who have cars and they service their cars for 40, 50,000 naira. If you ask them to have an eye test, they'll forget that they're servicing themselves. They'll first, the first instinct is, how much is the test and everything? You know, but meanwhile, if you, your car has a problem, <coughs> you'd want to go straight and service the car. So I'm not saying it's not expensive. I'm just saying, yes, it's expensive. It can be very expensive for some people, but blindness is worse. Very true. Brilliant. Blindness is blindness worse. Is. worse. You know, if it can be avoided as much as we can, we should try to. And before we let you go, what in what ways do we commemorate the World Glaucoma Week? How can people be a part of this? How can we spread right. the word and get the message out there? Okay, so the week started on the, it's this week basically, started on the 10th. And um, there have been a lot of, um, there's a lot of media hype this week for the World Glaucoma Week. What we want people to try and do is not just this week, this media hype this week them to continue so we ask people when did you have your last eye test and um probably ask you to lay guilty this. before you ask <laughs> all right okay so the important thing is even people at home just ask your parents and everything you know when did you have your blood pressure check last when did you have your mm. diet your sugar check last you know when did you have your eyes check last and these sort of things because it's sometimes 10 times more expensive treating a disease when it's an advanced stage, and treatments at the beginning, at the early stage, or even preventing it. True. So what I, I think it's the health 
seeking behavior we want to promote that people should just go for tests. And who should go for tests? Everybody. And how often should okay. we go for tests? We should all go for tests. If you have glaucoma in the family, then once you're above the age of 30, it should be an mm. annual test. If you don't have glaucoma in the family and there's no problem with your eyes, you could make the test either an annual test or, at the worst case scenario, every two years. But we encourage everybody to go for tests and don't forget your relatives who you could actually encourage as well to go for eye tests. Thank you so much for Thank joining us. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.